still at it, Waldo? It's only been six months. Takes time, you know. But worth it. A four masters like this? You bet, Charlie. <laughs> Say, uh, did a package come for me today by any chance? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here you are, Charlie. Thank you, Waldo. The call from Charlie Kane was a surprise. It was a Skid Row character I'd staked to a couple of drinks several months before. And now he wanted to return the favor. Halfway through the first drink, I knew it was a mistake. Charlie was beginning to get under my skin. I guess you were uh, surprised when I phoned. No, yeah, you didn't remember my name. Well, you know how it is, Charlie. People come, people go. I remembered you, though. What's to remember? Oh, I needed a drink that night. Forget it. I can't forget it. And it was more than just the drinks. I needed to know that, that somebody cared that I was alive. Well, you look like you're doing okay now. Meaning that clothes make the man? Yeah, something like that. No. A man makes himself. Maybe get some breaks. Oh, if you lose hope, there's no break big enough. No matter how bad things got for me, I was never afraid of tomorrow. Let's uh, skip the philosophy and just have a nice sociable drink. But I want to help you, Richard. I want to help you to understand certain things. I understand enough, and in my business I see enough. But you only see one side. Charlie, why are you bugging me? Well, I was only trying to do you a favor. The biggest favor you can do me is to get off the subject. Wait, you helped me once, I want to help you. Look, if I helped you, I'm glad. I gotta see somebody. Well, if you'll just listen. Please, let me help you, Richard. I feel I owe you something. You don't owe me a thing. Here. This is for my drinks. You can keep the change. Oh. Charlie Kane was a happy man, and for him it was just like having a bottle of 110 proof muscatel. He wanted the whole world to have a glass with him, but tonight I just didn't feel like drinking. And then I started feeling guilty. I had done the wrong thing to Charlie. He was just a nice little guy trying to share his happiness. I owed him an apology. Drinks are still on the table. Okay, Charlie. Oh. I'm glad you came back, Richard. I'm very glad. Who did this to you? It's not such a big deal. It is to me. That's good to know. 
Richard, a man makes himself. The idea is not to be afraid of tomorrow. But tomorrow is here. It's so soon. It's so soon. Uh, hello, Hendricks. What are you doing here? I found Kyle's in court today. Anything new on Charlie Kane? You know as much about that as we do. Oh, he was buried yesterday in Potter's Field. Yeah, I know. I was there. I was the only one. He only had $5.37 to his name. He had a lot more than just that, Lieutenant. What? Now, skip it. Anything you neglected to tell Lieutenant Kyle? No, but, uh... You can tell him this. I'm going to keep looking till I find out why a man that loved life so much had to lose it that way. That's the least I owe. Mind telling me where you're going? Down to the cemetery of lost souls, Lieutenant. In some way, I'm going to try to let Charlie Kane know that I remembered it. See you later. The lonely little man who died the way he lived wasn't alone anymore. Well, that face was funny. Agnes Wilton, society matron and publicity hound. I didn't know the others in Potter's Field, so I couldn't speak for them. But I did know Charlie King. I wasn't going to let Mrs. Wilton turn his grave into a stage for one of her performances. Yes. Is there something you want? You're Agnes Wilson. Yes, what can I... I've seen your picture in the paper. On the society page. Oh. Wait for me in the car, Frank. You put those flowers in that grave over there? Yes, I did. Although I can't see that it's any of your business. What would you call that, an act of charity? Well, I think an act of grace would express it better. Where are the photographers? I beg your pardon. Well, I don't beg my pardon, beg his. After all, he won't be around to get his picture taken. It'll only be your picture that appears in the paper, Lady Barnaby. It, uh, it couldn't occur to you that I do these things out of purely honest sentiment? Well, it's a little late for him, isn't it? But it's not too late for you to get your picture in the morning edition. Does it make you feel any better to hate me? I don't hate you. I could almost feel sorry for you, except I feel sorry for him. He had everything to live for. Now, what do you have except your name, your face in the paper, your acts of uh, grace? Young man, I don't really have to explain to you, you know. But this does happen to be honest sentiment. Sure. Seventy-five cents a night, payable in advance. And you gotta get out by ten in the morning. I'm not looking for a room. That's all we got here, mister. Rooms. Interested in shit, mister? Yeah. I used to be a seaman. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I once sailed in a four-master just like this. I built it from memories. And putting it together just like this, well, it's like... 
It's like living it over again, almost. Yeah. Hey, what can you tell me about Charlie Kane? That's why you came? Yeah, yeah, what can you tell me about? My fella had real class about it. Never did belong in a place like this. He didn't belong in a graveyard yet, either. Oh, sir. Real nice fella. Say, do they have any uh, visitors, anyone special? How about a guy about uh, medium height, uh, brown suit, where's he hat? But Charlie never had any visitors. No one here does. Yeah. Too bad about him. Just when things were starting to break. What do you mean things were starting to break? Hey, I, uh, ask you a question. Were you a friend of Charlie? Yeah, that's right. Well, then you should know the answer. Oh, please give it back. How long did it take you to get this this far? Months. Please put it back. It'll take me a lot less time to wreck it for you. Now, how were things breaking for? <laughs> what good will it do? Charlie is dead. Somebody planned for me to join him. Now, how were things breaking for him? I promised Charlie I'd never tell. All right. All right. They, they pay him $25 every time he did it. I thought it was crazy, $25 just to do that. Do what? I'm walking for an hour or so up and down in front of a house. Who's that? A big place uptown. What's your dress? I don't know just what it is. Oh, all right. All right, I swear I don't know. But all I know is what Charlie told me. He told me the name of the pirate that uh, lives there. Uh, some rich widow named uh, Agnes Wilton. was like its owner. Square and heavy and with the smell of coupon clipping riches. And like its owner, the grass in the front yard was beginning to die around the edges. After money, nearly everyone wants a family with just a touch of blue in the veins. Well, Agnes Wilton had both. But the people who stared down from the walls looked as if the laundry had stunched their underwear. Mr. Diamond? Uh-huh. I'm Harriet Barnes. Well, that accounts for the difference. Hmm? You're not being one of them. Oh, why? Are they so terrible? Well, right now, I'm just passing judgment on you. Ah, uh, Mrs. Wilton will not be able to see you right now. Well, I'll, uh, wait. I'm afraid she'll be indisposed for the rest of the day. How about you? You move rather quickly. Well, I see something I want, yeah. I don't smoke. I just wanted time to catch my breath. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, you're the lady's social secretary, is that it? Well, I'm not her secretary. I, I'm a feature writer on City and Suburb. Mind if I have a drink? You join me? No, I don't drink. No vices, huh? Not during working hours. You doing the usual build-up on the lady? I've been with Mrs. Wilton for over a month now, living her life with her from day to day. Familiarity breeds contempt, but it also breeds good honest journalism. Now, there's a lot I'd like to find out about the Lady Bountiful myself. Why do you call her that? Lady Bountiful? Well, that's uh, something between Mrs. Wilton and me. Why don't you tell me about her? Well, you'll read all about her in next month's edition. Well, I can't wait, honey. A friend of mine died a couple of days ago. He was murdered. Oh? Charlie Kane. Did Mrs. Wilton ever mention him? No. Any reason she should have? It was a down and outer sort of a skid row character. Well, then what possible connection could there be between Mrs. Wilton and a man like that? Well, I thought maybe you'd find out for me. You're asking me to uh, spy on Mrs. Wilton? Well, you said you don't, the truth. Oh, yes, but you could be entirely wrong about this whole matter. And I could, except that somebody hired uh, Charlie to walk up and down in front of this house. For what reason? I don't know. I went out to the cemetery yesterday to see Charlie. 
Somebody took a shot at me. I almost ended up in the grave alongside of him. Well, personally, I'm, I'm glad of one thing now. What's that? They missed. I'd like to speak to Oldfield 41654. Hi-Fi answering service. Uh, Sam, this is me. Look, I want you to check a license plate for me. Get a hold of that friend of yours in the Motor Vehicle Bureau. Eh? What's the license plate number? KGF 715. KGF 715. And Samuel, make it quick. Will do, Mr. D. suit? Hmm. The man in the dark brown suit. Oh, that man. You mean Mr. Regan? Yeah, I mean Mr. Regan. Room 311. Thank you. you have against Charlie Kane? Wouldn't do you any good to know now. We're going to go down the fire escape. Open it. Have to drink. I hope you don't mind. I didn't expect you back so soon. Well, things have been moving pretty fast for me since I left here. Well, I imagine you're the type that things usually move pretty fast for. Anyway, I'm glad you're back. I've been thinking about you. I've been thinking about the short life of Charlie Kane. Oh, you didn't uh, find out anything more? I found Ben Regan. He's in an ambulance on the way to the morgue. Well, who's Ben Regan? Shouldn't you know? I? The car I was driving was licensed in your name. There's a strange coincidence. Only this afternoon I reported it stolen to the police. 
You report the phone calls, too? What are you talking about? What phone calls? Phone calls Ben Regan made to you here. I checked the hotel switchboard now. Is that just a coincidence, too? You shouldn't judge me too harshly. After all, I was the one that uh, saved your life this afternoon. Thank you. That's all, just uh, thanks. All right, why did you save my life? I like you. And I can prove it in many other ways, too. You prove it to Charlie Kane now? You shouldn't waste your sympathy on him. He couldn't be trusted. But I know you can. Well, just what can I be trusted with? With what I'm going to tell you. Tell me. Well, I've been writing profiles on the so-called fashionable set for years now. And when I dug into Mrs. Wilton's past, I found she'd done a rather unfashionable thing. What was that? Well, she'd previously been married to a day laborer. She walked out on her husband and her son over 40 years ago, came to Los Angeles and married Henry Wilton. And she was so intent upon hiding her past that uh, she never even bothered to get a divorce from her first husband. Oh, it was a very well-kept secret until I came along. And cashed in on it. Oh, she could well afford it. You used uh, Charlie Kane to keep the pot boiling. Well, he was paid to walk up and down in front of her window where she could see him. She actually believed he was her son, and of course the thought of exposure terrified her. And uh, loosened her purse strings. Well, there are all ways of making a living. Why not take the easiest? Even if it means murder, huh? Charlie might have gotten in the way. What about Ben Regan? I couldn't let Ben kill you. What you mean is you'd be better off without him? <laughs> what I mean is I wouldn't be better off without you. I mean that. sinful 